Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now yesterday we began to look at the book of First Corinthians and I told you Paul was writing to the saints in Corinth. And who did he call the saints in Corinth? He said those who call upon the name of Jesus. And I told you yesterday that means those who believe on the name of Jesus. Now if he called them saints, those from Corinth, it means those of you from Nigeria, those of you from America, those of you from United Kingdom, those of you from Iraq, those of you from Zimbabwe, those of you from South Africa, those of you from Gabon. You are saints if you believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. So as I, we got to verse 6 yesterday, and I want to start from there. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 6 says, Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Has the testimony of Christ been confirmed in you? What does that mean? Hey, Jesus said this sign shall follow them that believe. Right. In my name they will cast out devils. You know, you know, sickness, most times sickness are caused by demons. Did you know that? So when you cast out the demon that brought about that sickness, the person becomes healed normally. You know, sometimes you see people that are sick and then they don't know they've gone to all the hospitals. They've done everything they can do. The doctors are even confused. They don't know what to say to you. They're just like, well, um, blah, blah, blah. Hey, be quick to know that most times such illnesses are caused by demonic spirits. So when you cast out that demon, the demon leaves. The person becomes okay. Jesus saw someone who was deaf and dumb and Jesus the Bible said Jesus commanded this dumb spirit to come out of him and when the dumb spirit came out of him he began to speak you see so, so a demon spirit can hold the tongue of someone and if you are such hearing the sound of my voice right now I command that demon to leave you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be free from every demonic influence over your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, now, so the devil is gone from you. You can start do, begin to do what you couldn't do before. Now, when I prayed that prayer, oh, thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you. Listen, if you were sick watching this program, you can actually begin to start doing what you couldn't do before. Because when I prayed that prayer, I sensed demonic spirit, not just one from one person. Leaving. When I said go, you know, they just had go. They didn't know who was being referred to, so they began to run out. So you get up now and begin to do what you couldn't do before, and begin to testify when you see that you have been healed. Praise God. All right then. So I said, how do you confirm the testimony of Christ in you? The things that Jesus said about the believer are they found in you? When they are found in you, then you know see, that you are a believer. If you cannot see any of what Jesus said in Mark chapter 16 and verse 17, if you cannot find what Jesus said in you, something is wrong. Praise God. So you need to go back to uh, the place of faith. Now verse 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Who shall... No, no, it says... It says, so that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, first of all it says, verse 6, it says, even as the testimony of Christ is confirmed in you. Now in verse 8 it says, who shall also confirm you unto the end? See, so it is Jesus that does the work of confirmation. Now that's why I said, it's important you see the testimony of Jesus Christ working in you. So, you don't say I'm saved because that day the preacher preached and I went out for the altar call. You may go out for the altar call. Did Jesus accept you? You remember John spoke about Jesus. He says, hey, when he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and, and, and with fire. And I have explained that to you before that you were not meant to be baptized with fire. You were meant to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. So, so you need to understand that. So, when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, now that's not your making. It's not something you can do by yourself. It's not something you can fake by yourself. Your own is to believe 
His own is to confirm you that you are His. If He doesn't confirm you that you are His, then something is wrong. See? So when you do something in His name, you expect a response from Him. So when you go for that altar call, or maybe someone preached to you, or maybe you're watching me right now, just play, or you were watching someone, and they say, oh, it's time to pray for you to get saved. And you say, yes, I want to get saved. And you prayed that prayer. Now that's something you did. Now when you do that, because you are doing it to God, there must be a response from Him to you, that He accepted what you just did. So don't believe when someone tells you, and hey, now you are saved. You, you don't have to feel anything. You don't have to feel any, you know, you just, just believe. Just, no, you didn't get saved. There is no man that will get saved and not know that something has happened to you. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. You will know that something has happened to you. You will know that you, were, you are now different. You will just know. Inside you, you will know that something has given way. And then from that day, you will notice that your taste buds are changing. Your after the things you like are changing. The places you like to go to, you go there again and you just feel strange about it. Like, what am I even doing here? I'm telling you the truth. That's how these things work. Praise God. So, let's go further now. So, it says, Jesus confirms you to the end. Not just at the beginning. He keeps confirming your life. He keeps confirming His word in you. He keeps confirming His testimony in you. Till the end. Hallelujah. Now verse 9. He says, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you. Now He's admonishing them. Speak the same language. Say the same thing. See? Say, but that ye be perfectly joined together in, in the same mind and in the same judgment. Let your reasoning be alike. See? Now, how is this going to happen? You know, you know sometimes you hear believers, people have had meetings. Look, we, we need to come together as Christians. We need to speak with one voice. We need to be one. And I tell people this truth. See, there is no place of carnality in the body of Christ. We can never do things carnally and think we're going to make headway with it. No way. Because see, the Bible says the flesh lusts after the spirit. And the spirit after the flesh. And both don't agree together. So you, you, you can't walk with God and do things by the flesh and think God is going to accept it. No, he will never accept it. If you want to do something with God, then do it by the spirit. Because the Spirit is His power of influence in that situation. Like I tell people, like I tell pastors, you can't say God has called you and you're going around begging for money to do the work. I won't even give you money. Praise God. I won't give you money except the Lord commands me to. Why? Because see, when God sends you, you should know how to go to Him to fund you. You get what I'm saying? So, but how is He not going to use men? Yes, He will use men, but He will speak to the men. It is not you that will go to the men and be begging. Ah. All right. That was just for someone. It says, verse 11, For it has been declared unto me of you by brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are, some, there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you say it, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I am of Christ. Now look at what he said. Is Christ divided? Of course you know the answer. Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? Now I want you to follow something here. Verse 14. Paul says here, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crippus and Gaius, lest any should say that I have baptized in my own name. And I baptize also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. Look at verse 17. Very important verse. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Did you see what Paul said? He said, Christ sent me not to baptize. Now, you look at that and said, hold on, Paul. 
I think something is wrong with this statement. Maybe you're getting out of line. Why? Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's in Mark chapter 16, from verse 16. Now in Matthew, Matthew 28, he told them, go ye into all the world and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them. <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So, so Jesus expressly gave an instruction. It says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, Paul comes and says, Christ did not send me to baptize. Okay, which other instruction are you receiving? I'll tell you what. He was referring to water baptism here. I mean, Paul, in, in what we just read. Paul was referring, when he said, Christ have not sent me to baptize. He was talking about water baptism. Christ had not sent me to do water baptism. So, so he mentioned the few people that he had baptized with water. You see? So he says, I don't, I don't do that because Christ did not send me to baptize. You understand? So he was rebuking him. He says, thank God that he even baptized you. So you will not think that I baptize you in my name. Now, if Paul is saying Christ did not send me and Jesus said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. What, 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 what's going on here? I'll tell you. Jesus never sent us to baptize people with water. He never did that. Now that's one, uh, uh, one, one mistake the church is still making till today. You know, there are Christians who, who have been baptized in mansion. In, 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 uh, have you been baptized with water? By immersion. No, no, have you, you know, it's even tautology. Have you been baptized in water? means have you been dipped into water? He said, no. Ah, no, you need to be baptized. No, sir, you don't need to be baptized. That's not the baptism Jesus was referring to. John came to baptize with water. But John who was baptizing with water said this. You read that in Matthew chapter 3. He said, the one who's coming after me, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. See, John talking about Jesus. He said, when Jesus comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. See. Now, Jesus talking to the disciples, he when he lived, said, Look, you are you guys are going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. But that's how it works. Jesus baptizes with the Holy Ghost. He doesn't baptize with water. So those disciples that were baptizing with water, they were not doing really what Jesus commanded them to do. Now you need to understand that. Praise God. So so let's 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 just go further. Now that's why Paul could boldly say Christ did not send me. He knew exactly what Christ told us to do. Praise God. Now he says, not in the wisdom, he said, but, but to preach the gospel. I was sent to preach the gospel. Now that's what he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. To make disciples of me of every nation. So he says here yeah, that the gospel we preach should not be with the wisdom of words. If we preach the gospel with the wisdom of words, then he says, the cross of Christ is made of non-effect. What does it mean, the cross of Christ? That is so powerful. This is, this is so powerful. I don't have time to go into it today, so I'm going to leave this for us to go into it tomorrow. Hey, the cross of Christ, you know, just the thought of it is just, huh, <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just stop here. So, 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 so I start from um, this verse 17 tomorrow. Praise God. I bless you today. Go out and shine. Go out and let the gospel be demonstrated in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.